Hello, Colin Sandy here from Sandy Audiovisual. And uh, this is a really short video just to, well, I guess I'll do uh, an unboxing of sorts, but not really. I'm just really opening the box so I can get to what I really want to talk about. Here I have the A10 Mini. This is not the A10 Mini Pro, but the original A10 Mini and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So I had the question, can you use a fiber optic cable Right, so one of these um, fiber cables to hook it up to your A10 Mini, but still get camera control on your pocket cinema camera. And the question is, I don't know. The reason you know that's asked is because these are mainly unidirectional. Of course, there's a back channel for um, HDCP, but will that return your information? Uh, to control your camera through the ATEM. So we're going to figure that out. Um, but first, um, since it's here, let's see what's uh, in the box. This is my one of my demo units here. And, oh, let me turn it around. Uh, oh, nice package here. You have your international power supplies, a nice little welcome package here. And I love this, that the uh, cinema cameras from Blackmagic all come with um, a full version of DaVinci Resolve Studio version 16. So let's see, there's a, an SD card here and uh, an activation card with the uh, security key or the serial number in there. So uh, I, I know uh, SAV's founder, um, Dr. Sandy loves DaVinci Resolve. He really was a Final Cut guy. I know he started with Premiere and he, I think he likes, um, what do you call that thing? Uh, Avid's, uh, not News Cutter, boy, I'm dating myself. Uh, whatever their editor is called. He loves those. I don't use any of them. But uh, Resolve, he, he really has fallen in love with. Um, comes with a nice little strap here. And... You know, you probably heard me in my peeve of unlocking power connectors, but, you know, locking power connector. Love it. Kind of like limo type there. Um, LP battery, little one. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? Ah, uh, and here we have the camera. See, it's nice and cozy. Right. And uh, that's pretty much it for the box. Oh, I like that actually. The uh, kind of like the foamy rubber shock mount there for for the cardboard box. And here's a new camera. So I'm gonna open this up and uh, we're gonna experiment and see how it does with a fiber optic HDMI cable. So my kid's uh, Lego Mon Calamari ship and kind of kicked me out of my office. Not really, but. So here's the Pocket Cinema 6K. And I gotta tell you, um, when I first saw this at, um, in Las Vegas, I thought it was absolutely hideous. But now that I actually have my hands on it, it's not the prototype, it actually came out to be a quite attractive design. You know, and I love that it, you know, has, it really has the feel of a DSLR. Um, you know, I'm used to the, the Canon 1D series. It's not quite as heavy. It's a little more balanced than that, being much wider. But um, I love the quarter 20 in the top, too. But, uh, oh, this is a, a nice piece of kit. But, again, um, there's enough unboxing on YouTube. We're here to really figure out how this works with fiber. So we have the A10 Mini here and we have it connected to the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And the question, uh, Baiju, Baiju, sorry, on Alex Lindsay's uh, um, office hours program in the morning, a very good informative thing. He asked a question and I really didn't know the answer, so I decided to do a bit of R&D. And the question was, given the unidirectional nature of a fiber optic HDMI cable, will the return commands from the camera be passed back to the switcher? 
So if you see right here, I have a uh, one of those fiber optic cables and I can't get a good look on it, but it does say um, display. So this is the display end, right? And the other end, probably blocked by the camera here, but uh, you can take a look at that. It says source. So the source end is in the camera. The display end is in the A10 Mini. And I'm happy to report that, yes, indeed, it does work. It, this is a, let's see. Let me take a look at it. Watch out, son. Um, uh, I think it's a 250 foot cable here and it works great. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't, I was too lazy to go upstairs and put a lens on this, but you can see from the tally light and from cam one on air, it's talking back saying it's on air. Um, this will be two, still have the, I guess I could take this off now. Um, you can see as I manipulate the shader here, right, that it is, in fact, shading, right? Um, what else is an obvious thing? Oh, yeah, the um, color temperature here, which is, where is that in the interface? Um, right here, it's at 54 or 50K degrees Kelvin there. So I'll change this a bit. I'll put it to 56. Right, and as you can see, 56. So yes, it is talking to the camera, and yes, you can make adjustments um, remotely with a fiber optic HDMI cable, which of course will give you a much, um, much more freedom as far as placement because you get a significantly longer run. The only caveat, of course, is as for now, as of this date in April 2020, these cables are still relatively expensive so, but when they're cheap, I mean, heck, this is a great way to get um, 4K bi-directional camera control into your switching, right? Not in particular with this, because this isn't a 4K switcher, but the technology obviously is there and it can, can work. So that answers your question, Baiju, um, maybe in a long way, but I'm... Um, there it is. It does indeed send a signal back. Take care.